This is chapter 12 of The Wee Freeman, Jolly Sailor. There was sand around her and white waves crashing and water draining off the pebble beach and sounding like an old woman sucking on a hard mint. Crivens, where are we now? said Daft Wooly. Aye, and why are we all looking like yellow mushrooms? said Rob Anybody. Tiffany looked down and giggled. Every pixie was wearing a jolly sailor outfit with an oilskin coat and a huge yellow oilskin rain hat that covered most of his face. They started to wander about, bumping into one another. My dream, said Tiffany. The drone uses what it can find in your head, but, but this is my dream, so I can use it. Wentworth had gone quiet. He was staring at the waves. There was a boat pulling up on the beach. And as one pixie, or a small yellow mushroom, the Knack McFeagal were flocking toward it and clambering up the sides. What are you doing? asked Tiffany. Best if we was leaving, said Rob anybody. It's a good dream you found us, but we cannot stay here. But we should be safe here. Ach, the Quinn finds her way anywhere, said Rob, as a hundred pixies raised an oar. Dinna fash yourself. We know all about boots. Did you not see not totally wee Georgie Pike fishing with wee Bobby in the stream the other day? We is no strangers to the piscatorial and nautical arts, ye can. And they did indeed seem to know about boats. The oars were heaved into the oar locks, and a party of feagles pushed the boat down the stones and out into the waves. Now, you just hand us the wee bam shouted Rob anybody from the stern. Uncertainly, her feet slipping on all the wet stones, Tiffany waded through the cold water and handed Wentworth over. He seemed to think it was very funny. We wee men, he yelled as they lowered him onto the boat. It was his only joke, so he was not going to stop. Aye, that's right, said Rob anybody, tucking him under the seat. No, you just bide there like a good boy, no yelling for sweeties, or Uncle Rob will give you a scalping across your ear hole, okay? Wentworth chuckled. Tiffany ran back up the beach, and she hauled Roland up to his feet. He opened his eyes and looked blearily at her. What happened? he asked. I had this strange dream. And then he shut his eyes again and sagged. Get in the boat, Tiffany shouted, dragging him across the shingle. Cravens, are we taking this wee streak of uselessness? said Rob, grabbing Roland's trousers and heaving him aboard. Of course we are. Tiffany hauled herself in afterwards, and she landed in the bottom of the boat as a wave took it. The oars creaked and splashed, and the boat jerked forward. It jolted once or twice as more waves hit it, and then began to plunge across the sea. The pixies were strong, after all, even though each oar was a battleground as pixies hung from it or piled up on one another's shoulders or just heaved onto anything they could grasp, both oars were almost bending as they were dragged through the water. Tiffany picked herself up and she tried to ignore those sudden, uncertain feelings that were in her stomach. Head for the lighthouse, she said. I, I can that, said Rob anybody. It's the only place there is and the queen disna like light. He grinned. It's a good dream, lady. Have you not looked at the sky? It's just a blue sky, said Tiffany. It's not exactly a sky, said Rob anybody. Look behind ye. Tiffany turned. It was a blue sky. Very blue. But above the retreating beach, halfway up the sky, there was a band of yellow. It looked a long way away and about a hundred miles across. In the middle of it, looming over the world as big as a galaxy, in gray blue with the distance, was a life preserver. And on it, in letters yellow than the moon, were the words, Jolly Sailor. We are in the label? asked Tiffany. Oh, aye, said Rob anybody. But the sea feels so real. It's salty and wet and cold. It's not like paint. I didn't dream it's salty or this cold. No kidding, huh? Well, there's a picture on the outside and it's real on the inside, 
Rob nodded. You can. We've been robbing and running around on all kinds of worlds for a long time. And I'll tell you this. The universe is a lot more complicated than it looks on the outside. Tiffany took the grubby label out of her pocket and stared at it. There was the life preserver. There was the lighthouse. But the jolly sailor himself wasn't there. What was there now, so tiny as to be little bigger than a dot, on a printed sea was a tiny rowboat. She looked up. There were storm clouds in the sky in front of the huge, hazy life preserver. They were long and ragged, curling as they came. It didn't take her long to find a way in, muttered William. No, said Tiffany, but this is my dream. I know how it goes, so keep rowing. Tangled and tumbling, some of the clouds passed overhead and then swooped toward the sea. They vanished beneath the waves like a water spout in reverse. It began to rain hard, so hard that a haze of mist rose over the sea. Is that it? Tiffany wondered. Is that all she can do? Oh, I doubt it, said Rob anybody. Bend them oars, lads. The boat shot forward, bouncing through the rain from wave top to wave top. But... Against all normal rules, it was now trying to go uphill. The water was mounting up and up, and the boat washed backwards in the streaming surf. Something was rising. Something white was pushing the sea aside. Great waterfalls poured off the shining dome that climbed towards the stormy sky. It rose higher, and still there was more. Eventually, there was an eye. It was tiny compared to the mountainous head above it, and it rolled in its sockets and it focused on that tiny boat. Now that's a head that'll be a day's work, even for Big Yan, said Rob anybody. I reckon we'd have to come back tomorrow. Row, boys. This is a dream of mine, said Tiffany, as calmly as she could manage. That's the whale fish. I never dreamed that smell, though, she added to herself. But here it is, a huge, solid, world-filling smell of salt and fish and water and ooze. What does it eat? Daft Wooly asked. Oh, I know that, said Tiffany, as the boat rocked on the swell. Wait, whales aren't dangerous because they eat very small things. Roll like the blazes, Rob anybody yelled. How do you can it only eats wee stuff, said Daft Wooly as the whale's fish's mouth began to open. Oh, I paid a whole cucumber once for a lesson on beasts of the deep, said Tiffany, as a wave washed over them. Whales don't even have proper teeth. There was a creaking sound and a gust of fishy halitosis about the size of a typhoon, and the view was full of enormous pointy teeth. Oh, I, said Wooly, quail, no offense meant, but I didn't think this beastie went to the same school as ye. The surge of water was pushing them away, and Tiffany could see the whole of the head now, in a way she couldn't possibly describe. The whale looked like the queen. The queen was there, somewhere. And the anger came back. This is my dream, she shouted at the sky. I've dreamed it a dozen times, and you're not allowed in here. Whales don't eat people. Everyone who isn't very stupid knows that. A tail the size of a field rose and slapped down on the sea. The whale shot forward. Rob anybody threw off his yellow hat and drew his sword. Ah, oh, whale, we tried, he said. This wee beastie's gonna get the worst belly ache there ever was. I will cut our way out, shouted Daft Wooly. No, keep rowing, said Tiffany. It's never been said that the Knack McFeagle turned their back on a foe, Rob yelled. But you're rowing facing backwards, Tiffany pointed out, and the pixie looked crestfallen. Oh, I, well, I hadn't a thought about it like that, he said, instead sitting down again. Just row, Tiffany insisted. We're nearly at the lighthouse. Grumbling, because even if they were facing the right way, they were still going the wrong way. The pixies hauled on the oars. That's a great big head he's got there, you can, said Rob anybody. How big would you say that head is, Gonagall? Oh, 
I'd say it's very big, Rob, said William, who was with the team on the other oar. Indeed, I might commit myself to saying it's enormous. You'd go as far as that, would you? Oh, aye, enormous is fully justified. It's nearly on us, Tiffany thought. This has to work. It's my dream. Any moment, any moment now. And how near us would you say it is then? Asked Rob conversationally as the boat wallowed and jerked just ahead of the whale. Well, now that is a very good question, Rob, said William. I'd answer by saying it's very close indeed. Any moment now, thought Tiffany. I know Miss Tick said you shouldn't believe in your dreams, but she just meant that you can't hope. Uh, I mean, any moment now, I, I hope. He's never missed. In fact, I'd go so far as to say it's exceedingly close, said William. Tiffany swallowed, and she hoped that the whale wouldn't. There was only about 30 yards of water between the teeth and the boat. And then it was filled with a wooden wall that blurred as it went past, making a zip, zip, zip noise. Tiffany looked up, her mouth open. White sails flashed across the storm clouds, pouring like waterfalls. She looked up at rigging and ropes and sailors lined up on the spars and cheered. And then the stern of the jolly sailor ship was disappearing into the rain and mist, but not before Tiffany saw the big bearded figure at the wheel, dressed in yellow oilskins. He turned and waved just once before the ship vanished into the murk. She managed to stand up again as the boat rocked in the swell, and she yelled at the towering whale, You have to chase him. That's how it has to work. You chase him, he chases you. Granny Aching said so. You can't not do it and still be the whale fish. And this is my dream, my rules. I've had more practice than you. Big fishy, said Wentworth. Now that was more surprising than the whale. Tiffany stared at her little brother as the boat rocked again. Big fishy, said Wentworth again. That's right, said Tiffany, delighted. Big fishy. And what makes it particularly interesting is that a whale isn't a fish. It's just a mammal, like a cow. Did you just say that? her second thought said, as all the pixies stared at her and the boat spun. The first time he's ever said anything that wasn't about sweeties or wee-wee, and you just corrected him? Tiffany looked at the whale. It was having some trouble. But it was the whale, the whale she dreamed about many times after Granny Aching had told her this story, and not even the queen could control a story like that. It turned reluctantly in the water, and dived in the wake of the Jolly Roger sailor ship. Big fishy gone, said Wentworth. No, it's a mammal, Tiffany's mouth said before she could stop it. The pixies were still staring at her. Well, I mean, it's just he should get it right, she mumbled, ashamed of herself. I mean, it's a mistake a lot of people make. You're going to turn into someone like Miss Tick, said her second thoughts. Do you really want that? Yes, said a voice, and Tiffany realized it was hers again. And the anger rose up, joyfully. Yes, because I'm me. I'm careful and logical, and I look up things that I don't understand. And when I hear people using the wrong words, I get edgy. And I'm good with cheese, and I read books fast, and I think, and I always have a piece of string. I mean, that's the kind of person I am. She stopped. Even Wentworth was staring at her now. And he blinked. Big water cow gone, he said meekly. That's right, good boy, said Tiffany. And when we get home, you may have one sweetie. She saw the masked ranks of the Knack McFeagle still looking at her with a worried expression. Is it okay with you if we get on with it? said Rob anybody, holding up a nervous hand. Before yon whale fit 
Eh, before the whale cow gets back? Tiffany looked past them. And the lighthouse wasn't far. A little jetty stretched out from its tiny island. <clears throat> yes, please. Um, thank you, she said, calming down a bit. The ship and the whale had vanished into the rain, and the sea was merely lapping at the shore. <clears throat> a drone was sitting on the rocks with its pale, fat legs sticking out in front of it. It was staring out to sea. It didn't even seem to notice the approaching boat. Oh, it thinks it's home, Tiffany thought. I've given it a dream that it likes. Pipsies poured out into the jetty and tied up the boat. Okay, we're here, said Rob anybody. We just chop yon creature's head off and we'll just be right out of here. Don't, said Tiffany. But it, leave it alone. Just leave it alone, all right? It's not interested. And it knows about the sea, she added to herself. It's probably homesick for the sea. That's why it's such a real dream. I would never have gotten this right by myself. A crab crawled out of the surf by the drone's feet and settled down to dream crab dreams. It looks as though the drone can get lost in its own dream, she thought. I wonder if it will ever wake up. She turned to the Knack McFeagle. In my dream, I always wake up when I reach the lighthouse, she said. The Pixies looked up at the red and white tower, as, and as one feagle, they drew their swords. We dinna trust that queen, said Rob anybody. She'll let you think you're safe, and when you've dropped your guard, she'll leap out. She'll be waiting behind that door, you can bet on it. You let us go in first. It was an instruction, not a question. Tiffany nodded and watched the Knack McFeagle swarm over the rock, rocks toward the water. Tower. Alone on the jetty, except for Wentworth and the unconscious Roland, she lifted the toad out of her pocket. It opened its yellow eyes and stared at the sea. Either I'm dreaming or I'm at the beach, said the toad, and toads don't dream. Well, in my dream, they can, said Tiffany, and this is my dream. Well, then it's a very dangerous one, said the toad ungratefully. Oh, it's lovely, said Tiffany. It's just wonderful. Look at the way the light dances on the waves. Where are the notices warning people that they could drown, said the toad. No life preservers, no shark nets. Oh, dear, and do I even see a qualified lifeguard? I think not. Supposing someone was to... It's a beach, said Tiffany. Why are you talking like this? I don't know, said the toad. Could you put me down, please? I, I have a headache coming on. Tiffany put it down, and it shuffled into some seaweed. After a while, she heard it eating something. The sea was calm. It was peaceful. It was exactly the moment that anyone sensible ought to distrust. But nothing happened, and then it was followed by nothing else happening. Wentworth picked up a pebble from the beach and put it in his mouth, on the basis that it might be candy. Then suddenly, there were noises from the lighthouse. Tiffany heard muffled shouts and thuds and once or twice the sound of breaking glass. At one point, there was a noise like something heavy falling down a long spiral staircase and hitting every step on the way. The door opened. The Knack MacFeagle came out and they looked very satisfied. No problemo, said Rob anybody. No one's there. There was an awful lot of noise. Oh, I, well, we had to make sure, said Doc Woolley. We, we men, shouted Wentworth. I'll wake up when I go through that door, said Tiffany, pulling ahead and grabbing Roland out of the boat. I always do. It has to work because this is my dream. She hauled the boy upright. Can you bring Wentworth? I, and you won't get lost or like drunk or anything. Rob anybody looked offended. We never get lost, he said. We always can where we are. It's just sometimes maybe we aren't sure where everything else is. But it's not our fault everything else gets lost. Knack McFeagle are never lost. And what about drunk, said Tiffany, dragging Roland toward the lighthouse. We've never been lost 
any time in our lives. Is that not the case, lads? said Rob anybody, and there was a murmur of resentful agreement. The words lost and knack mac fiegel shouldn't have turn up in the same sentence. And drunk? asked Tiffany again, laying Roland on the beach. Now getting lost is something that happens to other people, declared Rob anybody, and I'd like to make that point perfectly clear. Well, there shouldn't be anything to drink in this lighthouse, said Tiffany, and she laughed. I mean, unless you drank the lamp oil. <laughs> no one would dare do that. The Pixie suddenly fell silent. Oh, what would that be? Asked Daft Wooly in a slow, careful voice. Um, would, it, would that be that stuff in that kind of a big bottle kind of thingy? With, with a wee skull and crossbones on it? added Rob anybody. Oh yeah, probably. And that's horrible stuff, said Tiffany. It would make you terribly ill if you drank it. Hmm, really? said Rob anybody thoughtfully. That's very, very interesting. Um, what sort of ill would that be kind of thing? I think you'd probably die, said Tiffany. Oh, we're already dead, said Rob anybody. Well, then you'd be very, very sick then. And then she gave him a very strong look. It's flammable, too. It's a good thing you didn't drink it, right? Daft Wooly belched loudly. There was a very strong smell of kerosene. Aye, he said. Tiffany went and fetched, fetched Wentworth. Behind her, there was some muffled whispering as the Pixies got into a huddle. I told you the wee skull on it meant we shouldn't have touched it. Big Yawn said it showed it was strong stuff, and things have come to a pretty pass, you can, if people are going to leave stuff like that around where innocent people could accidentally smash the door open and lever the bars aside and take a big chain off of a cupboard and pick a lock and drink it. What's flammable mean? means it catches fire. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Dinner panic, no belching, and none of uses to take a leak anywhere near any open flames, all right? Now, just act natural. Tiffany smiled to herself. Pixies seemed pretty hard to kill. Perhaps believing you were already dead made you immune. She turned and looked toward the lighthouse door. She had never actually seen it open in her dream. She always thought that the lighthouse was full of light, on the basis on that on the farm, the cow shed was full of cows and a woodshed was full of wood. All right, all right, she said, looking down at Rob, anybody. I'm going to carry Roland. I want you all to bring Wentworth. Don't you want to carry the wee lad? Asked Rob. Wee wee man, shouted Wentworth. You bring him, Tiffany said shortly. And she meant, I'm not sure this is going to work and he'll probably be safer with you than with me. So I just hope I'm going to wake up in my bedroom. Oh, waking up in my bedroom would be so nice. Of course, if everyone else wakes up there too, there might be some difficult questions asked, but anything is better than the queen. And there was a rushing, rattling noise behind her, and she turned and saw the sea disappearing very quickly. It was pulling back down to shore. As she watched, rocks and clumps of seaweed rose above the surf, and then they were suddenly very high and dry. Oh, she said. Well, this is all right. I know what this is. It's the tide. The sea does this. It just goes in and out every day. Aye, said Rob, anybody. It's amazing. Looks like it's pouring away through a hole. And about 50 yards away, the last rivulets of seawater were disappearing over an edge, and some of the pixies were already heading toward it. Tiffany suddenly had a moment of something that wasn't exactly panic, it was a lot slower and a lot nastier than panic. It began with just a nagging little doubt that said, isn't the tide slower than that? The teacher, Wonders of the Natural World, one apple, hadn't gone into much detail, but there were fish flapping on the exposed seabed, and surely the fish in the sea didn't die every day. Um, I think we should be careful, she said, trailing after Rob anybody. Hi, 
It's not as though the water's rising, he said. When's that tide come back? Oh, not for hours, I think, said Tiffany, feeling that slow, nasty panic getting bigger. But I'm not really sure that this... Tons of time, said Rob anybody. They reached the edge where the rest of the pixies were all lined up. A little bit of water still trickled over their feet, pouring down into the gulf beyond. It was like looking down into a valley. At the far side, miles and miles away, the retreating sea was just a gleaming line. Below them, though, there were shipwrecks, and a lot of them. Galleons and schooners and clippers mass broken, rigging hanging, hulls breached, lay strewn across in the puddles of what had been in the bay. The Knack McFeagle, as one picked sea, sighed happily. Sunken treasure! Aye, gold! Jewels! What makes you think they have treasure in them? asked Tiffany. The Knack McFeagle looked amazed, as if she suggested that rocks could fly. Well, there's got to be treasure in them, said Daft Wooly. Otherwise, what's the point in letting it sink? That's right, said Rob anybody. There's got to be gold in sunken ships. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been worth fighting all them sharkies and octopuses and stuff. Stealing treasure from the ocean's bed. That's about the biggest, best thieving ever. And now what Tiffany felt was real, honest panic. That's a lighthouse, she said, pointing. Do you see it? A lighthouse is so ships don't run into the rock, right? Understand? So this is a trap made just for you. The queen is still around. Well, maybe we can just go down and look inside one wee little ship, said Rob, hopefully and wistfully. No, because Tiffany looked up. A gleam had caught in her eye. Because... The sea is coming back, she said. What looked like a cloud on the horizon was getting bigger and glittering as it came. Tiffany could already hear the roar. She ran back up the beach and got her hands under Roland's armpits so that she could drag him to the lighthouse. She looked back and the pixies were still watching that huge surging wave. And there was Wentworth, watching the waves happily, bending down slightly, so that if they stood on tiptoe, he could actually hold hands with two feagles. And the image branded itself on her eyes. The little boy, the pixies, all with their backs to her, staring with interest at the rus rushing, glittering, sky-filling wall of water. Come on, yelled Tiffany. I was wrong. This isn't the tide. This is the queen. Sunken ships were lifted up and spun around in the hissing mountain surf. Come on! Tiffany managed to haul Roland across her shoulder, and staggering across the rocks, she made it to the lighthouse door as the water crashed behind her. And for a moment, the world was full of white light, and snow squeaked underfoot. They were in the silent, cold land of the Queen. There was no one around and nothing to see except for snow, and in the distance, a forest. Ahead of her, and only just visible was a picture in the air. It showed some turf and a few stones lit with moonlight. It was the other side of the door back home. She turned around desperately. Please, she shouted. It wasn't a request to anyone special. She just needed to shout. Rob, William, Wooly, Wentworth. And away toward the forest, there was the barking of the grim hounds. Get out, she muttered. I've got to get away. She grabbed Roland by the collar and dragged him toward the door. At least he slid better on snow. No one and nothing tried to stop her. The snow spilled a little way through the doorway between the stones and onto the turf, but the air was now warm and alive with nighttime insect noises. And under a real moon, under a real sky, she pulled the boy over to a fallen stone and she sat up against it. She sat down next to him, exhausted to the bone, trying to get her breath back. She could hear her own thoughts, still a long way off, and her dress was soaked and smelled of the sea. They could be alive. It was a dream after all, right? There must be a way back, so all I have to do is find it. I've just got to get back.
back there. The dog sounded very loud. She stood up again, although what she really wanted to do was just sleep. The three stones of the door were a black shape against the stars. And as she watched, they fell down. The one on the left slipped over slowly, and the other two ended up leaning against it. She ran over and hauled at the tons of stone. She prodded the air around them in case the doorway was still there, and she squinted madly trying to see it. Tiffany stood under the stars, alone, and she tried not to cry. Oh, what a shame, said the queen. You've let everyone down, haven't you?